Hey again everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to create a delete dialog box. So say you had a gallery selected and you wanted to delete that gallery item but you wanted to ask the user are they sure they wish to delete before they delete. So they would hit the delete button, a pop-up, a dialog box would show up, it would say are you sure you wish to delete and it would use the title of the gallery item. You could either say yes or no. If you click no, it returns to the app. If you click yes, then it would delete the selected gallery item. So I have my app here with three gallery items. What we want to do first is we want to create, when we click on the delete button, everything locks down. So a lot of people would think, okay, well, we could just set all of our parts here to disabled, but there's an easier way to do that. The best way that I figured out how to do that is to use an icon and a rectangle. And this rectangle is going to take up the entire space of our app. Now, in order for this to work, what we want to do is we want to change the opacity of this rectangle. So we're going to go to the advanced properties into the RGBA fill. And we're going to set it to black, which is 000, and then we're going to change the opacity. And how do we change the opacity? We add a decimal for our last number. So if we have 0.5, you can see it's half a um, visible, 0 0.9, 0 0.1, depending on how clear we want to make our rectangle. So now that we have that icon here, and it's on the front of our app, nothing is clickable. Uh, that's what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that rectangle. I'm going to name it uh, Shape um, Lock Screen. I'm just going to rename these just to make it easier on myself. The next thing I'm going to do is create another rectangle. And this rectangle is going to be our dialog box. So I'm going to put it about in the center. And I'm going to change the color to a gray. How about that gray? That looks perfect. In this dialog box, first we're going to rename it. So I'm going to rename it to shape delete screen. We're going to have a few different labels. The first label is going to say, are you sure you wish to delete? And I'm going to put that for the entire width of the dialog box, and then I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to add another label. And this label is going to go right underneath our last label. And we're going to center it. And we're going to say it's gallery 2, because that's my gallery right there dot selected dot city so whichever one oh not city park name whichever one I have selected it's gonna highlight that park and I'm gonna go ahead and bold that one that's gonna be bold and then we're gonna have two buttons and these buttons are gonna be yes and no so this button is gonna read yes this button is going to read no. And I'm just going to go ahead and rename these labels. Button no. So now I'm going to create the button that's going <clears> to <throat> bring our dialog box forward. So this is going to read delete park. And I'm going to go ahead and rename that one too. Button delete park. So, how are we going to make this visible and then disappear? So, on this delete park button, what we're going to do is we're going to update context through a variable. This variable I'm going to call delete dialog. How about that? Delete dialog. And what's it going to do? It's going to turn on and off every time we click it. So the exclamation mark 
is going to make it turn off if we click it. It's going to make it turn on if we click it. So I'll just put that right about there. So on the No button, what are we going to do? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to update contacts with that variable delete dialog, and we're going to turn it off and on. And what's the Yes button going to do? Well, the Yes button is actually going to delete. So it's going to remove. And what's it going to remove? It's going to remove my city parks, because that's the name of my SharePoint list, my data source. Now, which city park is it going to delete? Well, it's going to delete the gallery to dot selected city park. But once we delete the park, we still want to remove our dialog box. So we're going to update context again with the same variable, and we're going to turn it off and on again. Now this is where a neat little trick comes in. We have all of our buttons and dialogues and labels here. Instead of turning all the visibility of each one of them and changing their variable, what we're going to do is we're going to group them. So I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to highlight all of my delete dialog functions and I'm going to press control G. So it's now created them in a group. And this is, group is going to be called group delete dialog. So on the group delete dialog, all we have to do in one place is change the visibility equal to our variable. So now when we hit the delete park button, nothing is clickable. We can click no and it goes back to normal. We can highlight Dawson Park, delete park, hit yes, and it deletes it. Uh, what a really useful, I think, that most people don't realize is that that rectangle actually locks everything up. And so what we want to do actually is with our delete park button, I want to push that to the back. I'm going to send it backwards. So I'm going to send it to the back, but then I'm going to pull it forward just a little bit. Bring forward. Bring forward. All right. Now it's where I want it. So now it's unclickable. We have to click in our dialog box. If we select no, it just cancels, comes back to our screen. And that's the fastest way to create a delete dialog box. Thanks for watching. This was a short one but I think it's very valuable.